Everybody, welcome back. I don't <laughs> lose on quarantine, so you might as well turn back now. Pretty be careful. Stats on this one, I mean, I'll show you the seed first. 3MZ3, CO70. Um, there's. The, here's the thing our rate of fire is bad, and our damage is bad. However, the rate of fire isn't so bad because we have triple shot. You know, through the lens of the fact that we're shooting three shots per shot, I would consider this, you know, a positive. I don't actually think that uh, 22 rate of fire is that bad. However, 2.72 damage. Still, still definitely that bad. Spider Bud, definitely not worth it. Um, but all of this is academic. Which is to say, not worth our time in this case. I don't know. It's something to be studied by scientists rather than played out by warriors, such as you or me. Um, and the reason it's academic is because we have Satanic Bible. Satanic Bible renders our discussion moot, and the discussers m mute. See, it works. It kind of works. Just way now. Um, because of the fact that we should really, especially if you drop a battery charge, really, really be in a great spot. We should suffer very little, and the little that we suffer should be, you know, we should be able to absorb it pretty easily. Um, we do have to be careful in the early game just because, you know, it takes us a while to get charges. And, you know, if we get hit multiple times before we can get a few charges, it's dangerous. Like, if that pill had been health down, then we could start to talk about maybe, you know, hey, we're, we're going full green light right here. Let's take it down to amber light. If you get hit for no reason, that's not helping you out either. <laughs> uh, I do call it an amber light. I don't know why. I just, it like, yellow light, it just doesn't sound right to me. I consider the Amber to be the official name. I don't have any other bit there. Like, there's no other uh, joke attached to this. The only joke is, is not a joke. It's the fact that that's really the way that I feel. <laughs> it's like, you know, you ever have, like, a, a friend of yours start watching the BBC? And then, for the next, like, two weeks, anytime they talk, you're like, you have a British accent now. Where did that come from? I think I heard somebody call it an amber light, and I was just like, that's me now. The guy who calls it an amber light instead of a yellow light. The guy who calls his friend's mate, even though without a South African, English, Irish, Scottish, Australian, or New Zealand accent... It doesn't sound right. Like when when people from Canada and the U.S. say "mate," it just doesn't it doesn't work right. It just doesn't feel it doesn't feel authentic. You know what I mean? I don't think we can make it work. Like for some reason, when I say "yeet," it feels natural coming out of my mouth. But if someone was like, "What are you up to, mate?" I would be like, Ooh, "Are we?" On a on a pirate ship or like what's what's happening there? I don't understand. Anyway, none of that's really that important. <laughs> but I'm on a very light anecdote uh, schedule because of, you know the uh, the quarantine stuff. Um, it's been a good couple of days though. I can't really complain about too much. Been inside. Playing some Animal Crossing, playing some Mario Maker, watching some movies. I watched three movies yesterday. And I've really got to start planning the movies that I'm going to watch. Because I ended up watching nothing that I meant to watch and just sort of fell into watching a bunch of stuff. How does that happen? Well, it's like, you know, it's one in the afternoon or something like that. You're like, well, we could watch whatever right now and then maybe I'll watch The Lighthouse later tonight. So, Kate and I watched the, uh, I think it's Spanish horror movie on Netflix, um, The Platform. I thought it was okay. It, it, I didn't like it as much as some people seem to like it, and I definitely didn't hate it as much as some people seem to hate it. Um, it's a, a decent horror thriller with very indie sensibilities. Um, 
Did you get the metaphor? Yeah, yeah, I think I got the metaphor. Um, they, they lay it on a little thick, for sure. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's, you know, a movie where occasionally people's heads are getting chopped off and stuff like that. I thought it was okay. Worth watching? Yeah, I mean, if, if it's bad, which I'm not, honestly, I haven't reconciled that. If it's bad, it's at least bad in an interesting way, instead of just, like, boring, right? Um, and then I watched The Terminal. Starring Tom Hanks and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Why? I still don't really, I, I haven't really determined that myself, honestly. Just kind of like slipped into it. Kate was like, have you ever seen The Terminal? And I was like, no. She was like, do you want to watch it? And I was like, I, I don't not want to watch it. Like, I heard 16 years ago when it released that it was like, okay. Then we watched it and I was like, this actually sucks. No offense, Tom Hanks. A little offense, Steven Spielberg, but I personally do not think that movie is with merit. <laughs> Just to be honest. <laughs> you know, I saw that Roger Ebert gave it a three and a half out of four. Um, a, a, a perfect watch is still wrong twice a decade. You know what I'm saying? I respect the man as a critic, but... He also really likes Schenectady, New York, and I'm not totally on board for that one, but at least that one is a little bit more ambitious. Oh, baby. Now we're talking. I mean, this is just what you want to see right here. Now, just don't eat it for no reason. Um, eat the HP, I should say. So this is like Wind City, baby. Oh, the voice was so sultry. It kind of scared me. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, if you like the terminal, whatever. It's one of those movies where, like... It is harmless fun. Like, I, I don't think that movie is like, if you like it, you're you're sending a terrible message or something like that. Like, I, movie's fine. You know, it, it's lighthearted. It, in fact, kind of part of the reason that I, I didn't really like it that much is because it has the opportunity to perhaps be funny, but also tackle some serious issues. But instead, it doesn't really, you know, except for like, you know, war is bad. Okay. I think in 2020, they would have made that movie with more nuance, I hope. Okay. Can't really complain about that one either. And then, to be honest, the best movie that I watched yesterday was the Clint Eastwood movie, Gran Torino. And I kind of, I hit the snooze button on Clint Eastwood directed movies released after the year 2000, for the most part. Um, so that's why I never saw Gran Torino. While I was watching it, don't get me wrong, I wasn't like, wow, this is the, the greatest movie ever made. But I was like, you know what? This movie is better than... My head had made me think that it would be. I thought that movie was was actually pretty decent. Okay, we have 20 cents. Buy this. That's a whiff. Reroll and look for a half price deal. I, uh, keep going. Keep looking for that half price deal. We don't get it. So what do we do? Let's buy a key and just get the heck out of town. You know what? I'll buy the pill. It's a tears up anyway. Ah, son of a... <laughs> oh well. Um, we're still like I mean you don't need me to tell you this. This if you're talking about like anime episodes, this is a filler episode. We're going to the beach. That's right, I'm familiar with the tropes of anime, despite not watching very much anime myself. It's cause in every corner of the internet, you can't escape anime's cultural relevance. While at the same time there's like a persecution complex. Even uh Yesterday, I was reading a thread on the internet about the COVID-19 virus. Not sure if you heard of this one. And um, one of the top comments was, Man, I hope they make a Cells at Work episode about this. I was like, you know, you gotta keep your sense of humor in a situation like this. But at the same time, is that really what's on, what's on your dome right now? <laughs> really, I can't wait to see the anime adaptation of this real-world event we're presently living through. But, well, you know, I'm not on edge about it, it's okay. It was just mildly thought-provoking. That's all I'm trying to say. But yeah, that was my Saturday. I was very, like, I did a lot on Saturday. I, I honestly think I've, and I've been, this arc has been going for a long time. I think I have broken part of my brain. I think, I think I, honestly, I no longer 
look to my day off as a day where I'm like, I'm gonna do nothing. Maybe this is just natural progression into adult life. Instead, I look to my day off as the day where I can do everything that allows me to also be happy throughout the week that I'm actually working. So what did I do yesterday? Well, I, you know, I always set my videos, but then on top of that, like, I replied to all the, like, administrative emails and filled out all the forms and mailed some letters, you know, stuff that I would like to do throughout the week, but don't always have the time for. And then I went, uh, you know what, it's pretty early in the day. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you're aware of this news, but my wife's pregnant. Uh, she probably could help out with, like, I mean, she, she cleans, to be fair. If anything, this has probably just brought the balance of housework more in line with like a 50-50 thing. But, you know, I don't feel good about the house being a little bit dirty and being like, oh, I hope my pregnant wife cleans it, you know? So on Saturday, I was like, bathrooms haven't had a deep clean in a couple of weeks. Went into the bathroom with the... Oh, the other reason is like, you know, like, Kate vacuuming or like, you know, mopping, dusting, stuff like that is not so bad, but... Our doctor advised us, like, it would be for the best, like, if you're using serious chemical cleaners. She should either, like, you know, wear a mask or just you do it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. That's fine. So, uh, so I did that. Took down the like, garbage, recycling, stuff like that. Like, I, and then I honestly, like, I, it was maybe two or three in the afternoon. And I, uh, started playing Animal Crossing. I played, like, an hour. And I was like, you know what? That's good for now. I did come back a little later in the day, but... I was just racking my brain. I was like, there's got to be more stuff I could do here. It's a, I got to be honest, it's a weird feeling. Even though I've been working on it, you know, for a while. Can I tell you, and if you've been listening to this series, or watching this series, or falling asleep to this series, or, you know, I don't even know why I'm talking right now, and nobody's watching, because uh, we don't lose on quarantine, for one. And also, secondarily, now that we have Mom's Knife, we definitely don't freaking lose on quarantine. But you'll know that, like, for a while I've been working through, like, this issue of work-life balance, um, and do I work too much, and, you know, what, what, what should I do on my day off? 100% taking a day off, a dedicated non-stream, non-video day, is the smartest thing I've ever done with respect to my workflow. I actually get more done now. It's just not that good with Mom's Knife, unfortunately. I get more done now in six days than I did in seven days on average without a doubt and i think it's honestly because you know i, I think so like, i mean you can figure it out yourself if, if you work from home right now you know it it's just psychological i guess um i'm kind of happy with this actually like if you work seven days maybe it's not burnout but like it's a lot easier to just take little breaks and you're like, ah, you know, like I'll make it up tomorrow and, you know, I got to make sure that I'm copacetic so I can, you know, come back to work with a smile on my face tomorrow and yada, yada, yada. When you work six days and you get the temptation to take like a, a break, and I don't mean a break for like mental health, I mean a break to like do nothing. Like a break to just read every headline on the Reddit, you know, top 25 list and then not even click on any of the articles and just let your brain go into outer space. Instead of doing that, you're like, oh, don't save that for tomorrow. Oh, let's go record some more Isaac, or let's go record some more Eden, or let's go yada, yada, yada. So, uh, definitely, like, that's a big part of it. Having a day off has been, you know, good for the soul, but also good for the the work. But then on top of that, I've really, like, I've reconceptualized how I feel about work this year. And it, it's very braggadocious. If you're one of the people in the comments, and there is maybe literally only one, who likes to be like, well, I'm glad you're having a great time, but things suck for everybody else. I recognize that. I can't do anything about it, but I recognize it. Um, you know, I, I really I feel blessed to have never lost the zeal for streaming and, and videos and, and whatnot. Um, but I think for a while, I wouldn't say, it's nobody else's fault. But in talking to other people, people were always like, you know, you should work less. You gotta work less. Hey, you should take some time for yourself. You should work less, blah, blah, blah. I think it's actually very good advice, and it led to me taking the day off. But I also have realized, like, in 2020, I just love doing this. So, like, I've kind of, admittedly, again, rocket fuel dad energy. 
coming into the clutch. New mortgage energy coming through in the clutch. Definitely making up a component of that. But also just like, instead of feeling guilty for working maybe more than I should, now I'm just like, you know what? It's a privilege to be able to do this day in and day out. We don't need to put the nose to the grindstone too long every single day, but like respect the, the time that you got there, I guess. I don't know. It became a self-indulgent bit, I'll admit, but perhaps a little bit of secondhand positivity in an unusual time. And anyway, we got to build some kind of foundation here to, to speak about for the rest of the episode because <laughs> we have Mom's Knife and Satanic Bible. If you could handcraft the world's most resident sleeper item combinations for a run, these might be the exact combination you would go with. You'd be like, something that makes it so he's gonna kill enemies in a single hit, like Mom's Knife, and also eats up a lot of synergies that would otherwise be interesting to watch, and a space bar item that makes it so even if he get hits, or gets hit, there's no consequences. But I guess, like, the, the previous discussion was more, like, in service of the fact that, like, I, uh, I've come to respect the, the value of work. Even on my day off, like, I, I, I do kind of consider it, and this is, let's make it a little less streamer-focused and a little bit more aww-focused. I do kind of consider it, like, dad practice to some extent. Like, I'm sure there's different philosophies on this. Some people might be like, we're having a kid soon, so I'm gonna, you know, go a little wild, maybe? I don't know, like a, like a one-third of a life crisis or something like that? Um, like, I will never get to party like this ever again, so I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts. That's very much not my philosophy. My philosophy instead is like, you know, starting in late September or October, you know, the priorities of my life are gonna be different than they are now. I might as well get used to, like, A, doing more, but B, like, kind of training my brain to be like, keep doing even more on top of that, you know? Because I'm sure, like, you know, I was a kid once. I understand. Parents got their own stuff going on. Mentally, the kid sometimes will just be like, you know, I'm bored. And you gotta you gotta come up with a solution to solve that kid's boredness. Or, you know, they're like, I just crap my pants. And you're like, well, I was really worried about that bill we just got from the electric company, but I guess I'll clean up some human crap right now. You know? I feel like that's a muscle that's, that's good to train. I always think about my parents when I was growing up. They did a very good job. And I think I, it wasn't until, you know, maybe like this year, especially when we moved into this place. When I, because, you know, previously we didn't really handle, or, I mean, we rented, so. It's not like your responsibilities are less. They, I mean, they are, sort of, but, I don't know. It's, it's not complicated, it's just, I'm trying to think of how to say it in a way that's less complicated. You do have more things to do when you're the homeowner. And I'm not just talking about, like, when stuff breaks, but I'm talking about, you know, like, hey, you know, you gotta, in Vancouver, you gotta make sure that you talk to City Hall to... Prove that you live in your residence so you don't get hit with like an empty homes tax. And then you got two property tax deadlines. And, you know, you, you got uh, our place is a little bit bigger now. So instead of taking, you know, an hour to full clean the whole thing, it might take like two to three hours. Eh, probably a little less, honestly. But, um, but I always think of like my parents when I was growing up. I don't think I appreciated it. You know, you work Monday to Friday. My mom packed my lunches until I was in high school, too. So she was, like, maintaining that element and also getting me to school. Well, I took the bus most days, I guess, but it, it varied from time to time. And then on top of that, like, coming home from work, cooking dinner. And their leisure time was they would watch, like, two episodes of TV. And then they would be like, okay, we're going to do the dishes. And then we're going to, like, uh, you know, maybe, like, sit down on the at the dinner table and have, like, a cup of tea or something like that. Then you go to bed and do it all again. But, hey, at least you got Saturday and Sunday. And then on Saturday, it was, like, you know, clean the whole house day. So they would clean the whole house for, like, 
usually like three or four hours while I <laughs> sat in my room playing Nintendo 64, which ended up being a really good value play for them. Somehow that has left me in a good position to help them out uh, later in life when they may need it. So I, I, at the end of the day, it worked, but it was kind of a, it was a heck of a risk regardless. Um, you know, and then, so that took up maybe like half of your Saturday. Then we would go out for a nice meal at like uh, a restaurant where the average price of the dinner was like five fifty, and we would be like, oh my god, they have rice here? It's so exotic. And then, you know, on Sunday, my mom would maybe watch a little TV or she might like, you know, play some guitar or something like that. And my dad would be like... Man, this house is, like, really nice, but you know what would be even nicer? If I redid all of the baseboards. And you're like, we're just gonna redo all the baseboards, huh? Like, I, I, I've come to uh, respect and appreciate that a lot more as I've gotten older, of course. But I'm also like, you know what? I gotta recognize that that both the DNA and that psychology are in me right now. I definitely, like, I owe my parents a lot, and I'm trying to... You know, now that I'm... They, they've they done good for me my whole life. This is an I love you mom and dad episode, apparently. But they've done well for me my whole life. But it's only now that we're having a child that I realize they also gave me the model for what parenthood, parenthood looks like. And I think they did a really good job. So thank you for that. So yeah, basically, if you want to make it as funny as possible, um, which is normally what I try to do and have failed miserably here, but um, essentially... Starting in a few months, I will have much less personal time, so I'm just getting a lot of practice in uh, not getting a lot of personal time already. And honestly, I guess the, the nugget out of that that's weird is that I'm finding it almost, like, more fulfilling. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm, I hesitate to even say this because I'm not, like, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, and I haven't even dealt with really, like, mental health issues beyond light generalized anxiety, really, but... Like, my pandemic, social distancing, isolation uh, toolkit is very simple. It's like every day, you know, if you work from home, work from home. Do something productive. Do a little exercise. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, you don't have to jog in place for 10 kilometers, you know, on your, on your living room floor. You could just... Uh, you know, drop down and do a couple sets of push-ups or something like that. Just a, anything. And then, like, do something productive outside of work. I.e., keep your place tidy so that you're not living in squalor. Uh, eat, you know, at least one, but preferably more than one reasonably healthy and full meal per day don't subsist entirely on snacks and then like you know i'm not lecturing you by the way i'm just i'm giving you my path to pandemic happiness for now what's keeping me sane and i'm still snacking great song i'm still snacking but if, if you're struggling i'm not saying this is gonna save you but it might help you out a little bit like i get it you know if you're a little bit down you're like oh i don't really feel like cleaning the house or you might be one of those people who I am very much not, which is, I'm a little down, let me clean the house aggressively. <laughs> oh, I know I just cleaned it yesterday, but we're going to clean every inch of it again. Um, but I think, I think you know, maintaining some semblance of, you know, because like when you do, relaxation's great. I, I love it. But sometimes relaxation can come from, you know, domestic productivity as well. You know what I mean? It doesn't just have to come from... Uh, you know, watching The Good Place or, you know, playing Animal Crossing. Ah, uh, the classic, I threw in one thing I do and one thing I don't, so you don't know whether I'm a hypocrite to be mad at me, etc, etc. But, like, I think it's just good for, like, your self-image and self-esteem. When you think back on a day and you're like, oh, what did I do today? Well, I didn't do everything I wanted to do, but, you know, I cooked and I did the dishes. And then I did that little, I did 20 push-ups. You know, so there's that. That and for the love of God, I'm begging you. I see y'all on Twitter. Don't use the pandemic as an opportunity to culture a drinking problem. I understand. It, it seems like it's a guilt-free sort of situation right now because what else are you going to do? But it's, it's gonna, there's going to be blowback. If you're wondering why you don't feel so great, 
after six straight days of drinking while watching Netflix. Both physically and mentally. That it's just my two cents. I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just giving you what works for me. I don't have all the answers, though. I always, like, whenever I say stuff like this, so I'm just... I'm letting you know there's multiple different kinds of serenity out there. Some people get serenity from... Uh... I guess being calm, you know, I don't want to say mindless entertainment, but, you know, relaxation that is kind of like, just sit down and do nothing. And I think I tried to emulate those people for a long time, and I was like, why am I not relaxed? Why do I feel stir-crazy when I sit on the couch for, uh, you know, six hours straight? And then some people are like, I get relaxation from having put in a few hours of labor around the house. That's it for me. It's, you gotta pay the toll to enjoy the cinnamon roll. I couldn't think of a rhyme in time. I got no problem with relaxing. It's just that before I... Why would I even pop it, dude? Before I relax, I would also just feel more comfortable if I was like, I also did all the domestic stuff I would like to do in order to make my life more comfortable right now. Anyway, we talked about that for too long, but get used to it, because <laughs> that's where we're at. Um, it is day, well, I guess we're entering, like, week four. Yeah, week four of the quarantine stuff, and, you know, quite honestly, I mean, it's wild, right? Like, a, when it first started, we were like, eh, a couple of weeks of this ain't so bad, and now, and you know, by the way, my, my advice is always the same here. I trust the public health officials, I trust the scientists. Um, and if you don't, I hope that you have like a relevant level of education and experience to back that up and you're not just like, you know. Like I saw one guy on Twitter, <laughs> this is the perfect example, he was like, I may not be a doctor, but I'm pretty good at pattern recognition. And then he went on to say something that was like, I don't, I think it's just the flu. And I was like, what the, what? You, well, you got a PhD in pattern recognition? What do you, like you play Osu or something? Like, like, what are you even talking about? I'm pretty good at pattern recognition. That's not like, I mean, it is a thing. That's like, you know, Someone being like, well, you know, I'm not a good basketball player, but my hand-eye coordination is incredible. I'm like, I bet it's just because you're good at Half-Life Alex. I don't, I don't buy that. But yeah, you know, what I was going to say is it's crazy. Like when it first started, you're like, yeah, what, two weeks of not going outside? It'll be fun. It's like camping. And now it's been basically a month. And we're now talking about like maybe spending pretty much the whole summer indoors. Not even talking about like, will it be over by May? People instead are like, I hope it's over before 2021. So I'm not trying to be a downer here. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm giving my introvert tips for survival. You know, if this is a long-term thing, I'm not one of those guys, because I understand everybody's processing this in, like, different ways. I'm not one of those guys. I, I saw another guy on Twitter that was like, If you leave this pandemic and you haven't developed a side hustle, that proves you were lying when you said you didn't have the time. Instead, you just didn't have the drive. And I was like, dude, maybe a, a world crisis just isn't the time where people feel motivated to take an e-commerce course about how to do Amazon drop shipping. Maybe <laughs> maybe they got kids, maybe they got elderly family members, maybe they got, you know, maybe their their job is in question as a result or maybe even their career is in question as a result of this stuff. And you're like, if you don't know how to p play piano by the time this is done, you're weak. I don't think so. But uh, I'm just saying my, my personal, my one little nugget of advice might end up being, you know, maybe when I make this video, because, like, we're working on, like, a, a backlog here, right, of close to a week and a half, maybe? 
Mostly because I've, I've been recording a lot more Isaac because it's been a ton of fun, as I cannot lose. Very much more motivated to make videos when you can't lose. I, I promise you that. But maybe this video will be like, ha ha ha. Remember uh, the week and a half ago when we thought we'd be inside all summer? The vaccine is already rolled out. They put it in the water supply. We're good to go. Um, but, you know, it might take it might take longer than originally expected. I'm not necessarily saying this is the time to get started on a new hobby and endeavor in your life. But maybe it is if you, if you feel motivated. But it's definitely like... If it, I'm, this, I'm not trying to put anybody on blast. I'm, I'm speaking literally about nobody specifically. Most of the time that I say I'm not trying to put anybody on blast, in my head I'm thinking of an individual and I'm like, I'm kind of putting that guy on blast. <laughs> oh no, this secret got out. This time I'm, I'm speaking in a very, very generalized sense. Um, if you're like, yeah, I'm going to keep, uh, you know, exclusively... If you're, you're taking it as an opportunity to like, drink too much and exclusively eat junk food because it's like a weird little pseudo vacation that could be over any minute I think you are gonna regret that experience I, I I would encourage you to get off that train ASAP start doing some some digital jigsaw puzzles or something like that keep keep your head straight there's gonna be a world after all this is uh, is over it's, it's better with you in it Preferably sober and not Cheeto crusted. I mean, a little Cheeto crusting is. I've been eating a lot of chips. I'm not gonna deny that. I've been eating a lot of potato chips. It's the little things. I've also been eating a lot of spinach. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.